Are Western weapons being used on both sides of the war in Israel? It would seem that is the case. We were warned that weapons from the West being sent to Ukraine were being sold to bad actors in the Middle East and abroad with organizations buying them on the black market. Uh, we know, obviously, that the United States is providing weapons to Israel. So does that mean U.S. taxpayer funded weapons on both sides? Redacted correspondent Mike Jones has been interviewing military officials and uh, digging into this story. He is in Russia and he joins us today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. So uh, we know that the U.S. is providing Israel with weapons directly. They are saying so quite publicly. Uh, but what about the evidence that the U.S. has been indirect indirectly providing Hamas with weapons? What do you know about this? Um, I've done a lot of research and recently I did an interview with Vasily Prozorov, who runs a telegram channel, UKR Leaks, uh, in many languages, including English. Uh, he informed me that through his colleagues, they had documentation that uh, included the sale of weapons outside of Ukraine uh, through corrupt military officials and through bribes and primarily actually through the grain corridor. Uh, using these barges that were intended for food. This was how allegedly they are getting or were getting the weapons out of Ukraine. It's a very interesting moment because I also have such information that weapons from Ukraine goes to Middle East to Islamic terrorists. It was confirmed by uh, POWs from Ukraine. Besides, in Mariupol Department of SBU, I got several secret documents in my hands where it was said that the weapons from Ukraine, from, West, uh, from the West, Western weapons, goes being sold to Middle East. Uh, on top of uh, Vasily's interview, just about this time last year, people will recall the interview with Aidan Aslin that John Mark Dugan conducted, where Aidan very candidly discussed how his battalion commanders called him in to get his contacts for his Syrian or the, I think it was the, um, the Kurds and the rebels there. So while he was in Syria, he obviously got to know some of the fighters and the Ukrainian commanders, as Aslin alleges, were keen to find out who these people were in order to sell weapons to them. Right. Uh, so we're going to play just a little bit of that clip right now. Watch this. I'm sorry, say who it is again one more time. Aiden Aslin. Okay, so watch how he says quite candidly that uh, this was my job is to make these connections for sale of black weapon markets, uh, black market weapons. Right, so I was like asking my friend, like, what, what, what do they want to speak to you about? And they were basically saying that they want to, like, basically sell us weapons, like, for a price. Um, you know, I've read this in the news, like, stuff went missing. And this is the only way I can, like, think of is that the stuff that he's, like, wanting to sell is the stuff that's going missing. I don't like to say like that I helped it, but like it, it might be possible that it was me that that, that, that they had it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like speaking to him. I was like, "How how was things in Syria?" And it's like it's good um, with like your friend is like being able to help us like with like certain aspects um, that the Americans wouldn't give us. Um, I was like, I'm glad I could help with that because and Shit. yeah. Did, did he was he specific at all about what he, aspects? He said he said like. Uh, apparently they're, they're going to be sending some new like rockets that go on the way. So your research would indicate that this is more on the up and up than it would seem. Whereas just over the weekend, President Putin said that he doesn't blame the Zelensky government. He says they probably don't want this, but they can't stop it. Here's a clip of that. Market for weapons works in such a way that there are people who want to buy weapons and they will find they will find it. And yes, of course, we have information on the sales of weapons to countries, including countries of the Middle East. Well, I have no sympathies for today's leadership of Ukraine, but I have doubt that it's done willingly by them. So what do you make of this, that even Putin is not blaming the Zelensky government? He's presenting this as if it's just an inevitability that can't be stopped. 
Yeah, he's absolutely right. And let's not forget that uh, he, among many other Russian officials, did quite um, quite voluminously warn about this, about the level of the corruption, as they predicted, would mean there would be these leak of weapons onto the black market, which, as Sergei Lavrov warned, would feed into hotspots around the world. So this case now that we've seen in Palestine and Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu actually let slip with the Jerusalem Post as to why Israel wasn't sending weapons to Ukraine, because he said a concern of Israel was that the weapons would then find their way into the hands of Iran. And he claimed that Israeli military had discovered weapons intended for Ukraine on the border of Israel uh, in the summer uh, of last year, or sorry, earlier this year. So he actually let slip that this was happening. And what's also of concern is that places like Eritrea, Libya, Sudan, places in Africa, there are even reports that these rebels against the French have been using these weapons, as was clearly warned about. So whilst this has been an unmitigated PR disaster for certainly the Zelensky regime, where he's then come out and claimed that Russia captured these weapons and then handed them over to these hotspots. So that that is almost comical. The brain. Right. Absolutely. And yet you need only Google uh, Hamas uh, weapons Ukraine and you'll have the Washington, uh, sorry, the Moscow Times, the Kiev Independent uh, among Business Insider as well, all repeating this claim that actually it's Russia who supplied U.S. weapons intended for Ukraine. Right. And I think it's worth remembering that these warnings that have been going on about these weapons getting in the hands of unintended people um, have been sort of scoffed off by the Western press as Russian disinformation or anti-war rhetoric. And now it does seem to be true. Now, in response to what you had just said, Zelensky claiming that it was Russia capturing Western weapons and then funneling them into uh, Middle East, into the Middle Eastern places, Putin has said Russia wouldn't do that because they have a good relationship with Israel. Can you speak to that? Yes, that's absolutely true. And that's why we've seen Russia and indeed China uh, come forward with meaningful sort of peace proposals. This has certainly been an opportunity for BRICS to actually demonstrate their professionalism in diplomacy, as opposed to Annalena Baerbach and Blinken and so forth. Uh, Russia has traditionally had very good relations, both with Palestine and Israel, which is why you haven't seen certainly the leadership come out on, you know, condemning either side. They understand the problem, the, the scale of it, and also the mechanisms that are likely needed to solve it. And once more, uh, as Putin has pointed out, this is the US policy failure in this region, trying to monopolize the, the situation there and when you have UN resolutions that were passed but never enacted, uh, we've seen the same uh, as we did with the Min Minsk agreements where there was uh, people who wanted to be an independent state and all these agreements not being reinforced. Now, Russia today has proposed a United Nations resolution on this war so that at least we can get on record some votes. Why do you think they continue to do this even though anything that's voted upon by the United Nations just I don't know, the West does whatever they want anyway. Well, yeah, we see this quite a lot. Vasily Nabenzia um, highlighting even this case with these weapons uh, coming out of Ukraine in there. I believe it's because, as we saw in the years running up to this uh, conflict in Donbass, where Russia dotted the I's and crossed the T's, they went through all the formal channels, got all the records, so that then you have that process that's well documented and much more difficult which leaves it harder for the Western press to spin, which is why we see these formal processes and resolutions taking place, even though the parties that are responsible for enacting and enforcing them likely won't because it won't match their agendas. Yeah. Um, OK, I'm just going to leave you with this last question because I'm curious about your, uh, your take on this, even though it has little to do with weaponry through Ukraine. But do you think that this war in Israel will now eclipse the war in Ukraine and make it so that Western powers have less interest? And then maybe that will lead to possibly peace resolutions because it's just no longer in vogue, for lack of a better word? 
Yes, we're seeing some sort of former members of the Ukrainian Rada uh, warning now that support from the West will end in November, specifically the US. This is what they're warning um, their well, the citizens of Ukraine to brace themselves. This has certainly provided quite a convenient off-ramp and also has taken media attention away from very difficult topics, most notably, obviously, the failure of the counteroffensive, the waste of money, the corruption, as, as we're seeing the, the fruits, uh, if you will, now coming through, which looks very poorly. And if we think of Biden's upcoming election campaign, it's very convenient to have that light shone elsewhere. So hopefully it will uh, resolve in, well, it will result in a peace in certainly the Donbass region, but it's just tragic that it comes at the cost of more lives in another region. Yeah, absolutely it is. Okay, well, thank you for your analysis as always, fantastic. Uh, you can follow Mike Jones on his Telegram channel, which is I Earl Gray um, and other places. So thank you again, as always, for reporting for Redacted. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.